Hello YouTube, welcome back to another Roblox scripting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you about variables. And if you're following along with the book, this is section 2.1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my game, which was a scripting book game. And in case you guys don't know how to get back into this page, what you want to do is you want to go into create.roblox.com and then you'll find it right here. Or alternatively, if you're on the Roblox homepage, you just have to click this create button. and It will take you right here and you can find your game again. And I called mine scripting book game. That's how you edit your game. You're going to hover over the image right here. And you're going to click on edit in studio. And if you have multiple games, you just hover over it and you click edit for all your other games. So I'm going to go back into Roblox studio and here's my game. And in the last couple of videos, what we worked on was instance.new. We learned how to create something. So it's instance.new, the thing you want to create, and then game.workspace. And let's say that instead of a part, I wanted to create a wedge part. So for example, I can right click workspace, I can click insert object, and I can type wedge part. And then we see a wedge part showed up. Now, if you created a normal part, you would do the same thing, but you would put part here. And as you can see, a wedge part and a part are not the same thing. A wedge part looks more like a triangle on this side, and a part is just kind of a rectangle. So you can do the same thing with your script. Instead of part, you just have to type wedge part. And I'm gonna click play. And now instead of a part appearing, a wedge part will appear. So now we can start talking about variables. But to talk about variables, you have to first talk about nicknames. So let's talk nicknames. So let's say you have a friend called Alexander. And Alexander wants to be called Alex because maybe he likes that name. Maybe because he prefers Alex to Alexander because Alex is shorter than Alexander. And everyone else likes it too because they have less things to say. <laughs> Whenever they call Alexander, from now on, they're going to call him Alex. So Alex is a nickname that Alexander has. So now that we've talked about nicknames, so a variable is basically a nickname. So whenever I say nickname or I say variable, just think about them as related for now. So a variable is essentially a nickname. And to create a new nickname, we're just going to use the word local. So we're going to say local. And then we're going to say, for example, let's say my number equals 10. So what does this mean? So we're basically saying, let's give 10 a nickname called my number. So whenever I say my number, I'm talking about 10. So 10 is now associated with my number. So this is kind of just like how Alexander is now associated with Alex. So for example, this would be our Alexander and this would be our Alex. Whenever I say my number, I want you to think of 10. So for example, let's print 10. Let's just start with printing 10. So we don't even need this anymore. Let's just print 10. And I'm going to go to view and I'm going to go to output so I can see it. And I'm going to click play. So as you can see, 10 has been printed to the output. So now let's start using the variable. So I'm just going to paste it back in. So we said local my number equals 10, which is basically saying my number is now referring to 10. So we're basically saying that my number is now referring to 10. So instead of saying 10, since 10's nickname is my number, we can just put my number right here. And this, what do you think this will print? Will this print my number or will this print 10? Write your answer in the comments below. I'm gonna click play and it printed 10. So why did this happen? So just as I was saying earlier, my number's nickname is now 10. So whenever I say my number, it's basically saying 10. So it's just like how whenever I say Alex, we're thinking about Alexander. So I said print my number and my number is equal to 10. So we printed 10. So that's why 10 showed up. Now, why didn't my number show up? So remember in the previous, in like the first video of this series, I said print hello world. And then what ended up printing was hello world. So let me just get rid of this. And as you can see, what ended up printing was hello world. But why is it that when I did print my number, it didn't just print my number, it printed the actual 10. So this is because of something called strings. So strings are basically uh, like words or characters, so or sentences or paragraphs or essays. So anything in quotation marks is a string. So when you say print quotation mark, hello world, quotation mark, 
this whole hello world is called a string. That's why this is bolded right here. And my number, do you see any quotation marks here? Nope, I don't. So this is not a string. And when it's not a string, Roblox will think, oh, this is not a string. Does anything called my number exist in this script? And then it looks up here and it says, oh, well, 10 and my number are related. My number's nickname is 10, or 10's nickname is my number. So when you print my number, you're just saying print 10. 10 is associated with my number. So that is why my number didn't print. That's why 10 printed instead of my number. Now, if I were to turn this into a string, that means I have to use quotation marks. So I'm gonna put quotation marks. I'm gonna get rid of this. Now, what do you think will print now? Do you think 10 will print or do you think my number will print? If you guess my number, you are correct. This is because of the quotation marks. Whoops. This is because of the quotation marks. Now my number is a string, so my number will be printed right here. And once again, if you were to get rid of the quotation marks, it is now no longer a string. It is now a number because my number is a variable and that variable points to a number, 10. So this is our Alex and this is our Alexander. So it's like we're saying print Alex and it's pointing to Alexander in our nickname example, of course. Now we can do a lot of things with this. So for example, print 10 plus one. This will print 11 because 10 plus one is 11. And I'm gonna click play. As you can see, there's an 11. Now, remember, 10's nickname is my number. So instead of 10, I could put on my number here. And now this will print the same exact thing as that. As you can see, it printed 11. So once again, this is because my number is 10. So 10 is used in place of my number. So it becomes 10 plus one instead of my number plus one. And the 10 plus one is just 11. Now I know I've been saying, I've been explaining this a whole bunch of times because this is really important to understand because code gets really, really complicated. So I'm just gonna keep on explaining it over and over until it eventually clicks. So now what I can do is, so let's just, instead of saying my number plus one, let's just create another variable called second number, local second number equals one. And now instead of this one, I can just write second number. So now we have my number plus second number, my number plus second number, or my number plus second number, or 10 plus one, which is the same thing as 11. Now, what we can do is we can change these numbers as we wish. So instead of 10, I could put a 45. Instead of one, I can put a 968. And it will compute this. So it will print my number plus second number, regardless of whatever value this is. I can click play. Now we've got a 1013, which is the value of my number plus second number. And I can change these variables. So this is like changing the Alex to something different. So maybe Alex just wants to be called A. So let's just call it N. Let's just call this N2. So this is like changing Alex, this is like changing Alexander's nickname, which was Alex, to A. And this is like changing another nickname. So we've now got N and N2, and now we've got red lines here. So why do we have red lines? Well, this is because my number no longer exists. Roblox looked up here and it said, where's my number? You're telling me to print my number, but my number isn't a thing. See right here, it says unknown global my number. So that means I looked for my number and my number didn't exist. What is going on? That's because we changed them. So we have to set this to N and we have to set this to N2. So now instead of my number and number two, we have N plus N2, which is the same thing. And we've got 1013. So that is two variables as numbers. So we've got a number here and a number here. A number is called a data type. So 45 and 968 are numbers. Now what I can do is I can get rid of these, I can get rid of everything, and I can create a variable that is not a number. So variables can represent a bunch of things. So kind of like Alex or Alexander's nickname could be Alex. Now Alex is a name and we can't really call Alexander something else. Like I can't call Alexander a microphone because he's not a microphone. But in Roblox, I can call I can call my nicknames other things. So we had my number, which was a number. That's like saying how Alexander's name is Alex. But we can change 
we can change our variable from my number to so let's say so we can also set variables to strings so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say local my string equals and remember that whenever we're using strings we have to use quotation marks so they turn green so i'm going to say hello world now we have a variable called my string and it's set to hello world so this is like saying hello world's nickname is my string now i'm going to click print my string and now it's going to print hello world because my string is now set to hello world and as you can see it printed hello world now i can change the value of my string so i can set this to like high and it will once again print my string which is set to high so i can have as many variables as i want i can say local my number equals 10 local my other string equals world local my other other string equals exclamation mark so as you can see i can set variables to anything i want i can set them to numbers i can set them to strings and i can also set them to instances themselves for example to create a part what we did was instance instance.new part the game.workspace what that did was it created a part and we put it inside of game.workspace so i'm gonna click play Now we've gotten a part instead of game that workspace. And we've also got our high, which is my string, high. So I'm just gonna get rid of all this other stuff. And we can set this new part that we created to a variable. So we can actually say local my part equals instance.new part game that workspace. So now this my part is gonna refer to the new part that was created from this line. So if you do print my part, it's just gonna print part. So click play. Now we've gotten a part inside of our game, which is this thing right here. And in our code, this my part refers to this thing right here, which is the part. That's what's printed right here. And that is also that thing right there. So this part is equal to that part, which is also equal to this my part thing in our code. So that's how we set a variable called my part to this thing right here, which is that part that we created. Okay, so now the last thing that I have to talk about is Boolean. So a Boolean is just a true or false. So what I can do is I can say local elephants have 13 feet equals. So is this true or false? Do elephants have 13 feet? I don't think so. So I'm going to say it's false. And as you can see, it got highlighted. So this false right here is called a Boolean. A Boolean is nothing more than a true or a false. So if you set this to you set this to true it's now true so elephants now have 13 feet that's true if you set it to false elephants do not have 13 feet i can say local it will rain today equals so will it rain today well that depends on your location and the weather i'm just gonna say true so now print if i wanted to know whether elephants have 13 feet or not i can just type elephants have 13 feet and it should print false as you can see it printed false that means elephants do not have 13 feet now in a game development context so that means let's say you're making a game and let's say you wanted to know whether or not someone is admin so you can say is admin and we've set it to false that means they are not admin oops is admin and what we can do is we can print is admin so now we're asking, is, are they admin? And then it will print whether or not they're admin, which was false. So you can click play and it will print, is admin? No, they're not admin. So let's say someone has a game pass for uh, double coins. So let's say we have a currency in our game called coins and someone has a game pass for double coins. So we can say player has double coins and this thing will be either true or false, depending on whether or not they have double coins. We'll learn how to script all that later. But for now, we're just gonna say player does not have double coins. So we can say, does the player have double coins? And we just print the value of the variable. So does the player have double coins? It will print player has double coins, which is false. 
I can actually rename this. Does or does the player have double points? Since we don't know whether it's true or false. So now we have a variable called does the player have double coins and we set it to false. And when you print does the player have double coins, it will just print the value of that variable, which is false. So that means they do not have double coins. False. Now, if I set this to true, it will say that they do have double coins. True. Okay, so I think this is enough for today's video. So variables are awesome. They're pretty cool. You can change things around. You can try making your own variables. I would recommend you guys try to make like a bunch of true and false variables, a bunch of Boolean variables, a bunch of number variables, a bunch of object variables. Remember, local object equals instance.new part game.workspace. This is a variable that holds an object. This is a variable that holds a true or false or a Boolean. And this is a variable that holds a number. And lastly, this is a variable that holds a string. So we've got Boolean variables, object variables, numbers, and strings. Okay, so that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.